Hey, Dan. Me and some friends were talking, and we were just wondering, what do you think is the most powerful business model of the 21st century? The most powerful business model? Well, I think the business model has changed for years. Now, what, what works now compared to what works before, you think about back in the industrial age, uh, people are the most valuable things, right? In order to, to have manufacturing power, right? We're talking about Carnegie days that they need, they need people, right? And then later on, uh, even later on, then is now more technology now. So that's the difference. And you think about the most, some of the most successful companies in the world today, where you think about like Airbnb, let's say Airbnb, right? Well, they own no real estate. Uh, Facebook, which is the largest media company in the world, they create no content, right? Uber, largest taxi company in the world, owns no taxi, right? And it's only now recently they, they develop more, but really a lot of them started off that way. So I believe the, the most powerful, I would say business model in the 21st century is actually what I call the network effect. Okay, so it's not, you're not just selling a product or service, but you are creating a network where you put people together, right? And tech is the easiest to explain because that's what most people will understand, right? So, and there's a difference between a network effect and a, what I call economy of scale, right? So economy scale, let's say Apple, for example, right? For Apple, the, the more people buying something that will lower the cost of production, now we have the economy of scale, right? The more we manufacture, we lower the each unit cost. That's great, right? So more people buying Apple, there is an economy of scale thing, but the network effect is now people buy Apple, people buy the iPhone because they want to use iMessage to their friends. That's a network effect. Now you think about Apple, it's actually a network within a network. So think about all the app developers. Apple attracts a lot of good app developers who would develop those apps because why? They have a lot of users, right? A lot of users. So when they have a lot of users, so that attracts the talent, then they won't develop the apps. And because they have a lot of good apps on Apple, so then more people want to go to the marketplace and, and buy, buy all the apps in the marketplace. So you think about the network effect, meaning for each user that gets added to the network, the network becomes more valuable and adds more value to the other users. So think about Uber. If Uber doesn't have drivers, how valuable is Uber? Uber, not very valuable, right? No one is using it. But if more drivers are using Uber, that means that if I need a car, I can just call and boom, here it comes. And then because I, there are more customers, more users using the app, that attracts more people want to become a Uber drivers earning money because they could, they could turn over fast. So the trick to the network effect is we need to be able to create and attract suppliers so that attracts more users and more users attract more suppliers. Now the key thing about once you get that going, it almost creates a perpetual effect. It almost creates almost like an invisible monopoly if you think about it. Right, that now it's pretty difficult. Yeah, you have Lyft trying to compete with Uber, but whoever is first, whoever is good, and they actually grab the majority of market share, has the most amount of users, they will naturally attract more and more and more people. And you look at Craigslist, you look at eBay, you look at a number of these platforms, after all these years, yeah, they are ups and downs, but they kind of still dominate the industry because they have the network effect. No different than the platform that we have, Closers.com, right? Where we connect companies with sales professionals together, right? So the more companies going on Closers.com, the bigger the platform, the more successful, and the more gigs, more opportunities, more jobs there. More jobs, more remote sales talents going there using the platform. The more talents that we have on the platform, the more companies want to use the platform. So after a while, in the beginning, maybe, maybe, maybe slow because you need to build up the network effect. But once you hit that critical mass, it just goes like that. And most platforms are like that. 
takes a long time, but once they hit the critical mass, that's it. Then they become the leader. I think, I think in terms of business model and what I tell young people all the time is you don't want to just sell a product or service. That model is out of date. Like if you want to make a living, you know, sell product or service, that's fine. But if you actually want to build something great, like something that's significant, you want to create a network. When you create a network and you become the preferred choice in your ma marketplace, then you don't just sell product or service. Now you become what I call a category, category king or queen. You are the leader in that category. And when you do that, you just, you just dominate. And now the, the value that you can add to the marketplace is exponential. And when that happens, also the wealth that you create is exponential.